Hello, I'm UK Air Gunner, and this is the M712 Brim Handle by KWC. Yes, this is it. I've finally got around to doing the review on the M712, and uh, as you can see, it's a pretty big pistol, right? <laughs> and before we get going, um, there's one major thing I want to cover, and that is that in the UK, this is not a fully automatic pistol. It is purely semi-automatic. That is to say, moving this selector switch from N over to I can do it, R does absolutely nothing. Okay, it's going to shoot in semi-automatic, and no matter what position that is in, um, that's the because of the laws in this country. Of course, if you're watching this from abroad, chances are it is in full auto, um, and you can have great fun with it. I'm sure. <laughs> so, and of course, the other thing. Um, is that I've weathered this, you can see, I think quite easily here as well, and all the scratch marks and everything. Um, that's me, <laughs> doesn't come like that. It's got quite thick paint uh, on it, I discovered, trying to weather it. Uh, it took a bit of time to get through the paint, so I suppose that's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> um, so let's just uh, have a quick look around. There you go, quite nice and light. Um, the grips, um, are actually not bad. These are the plastic grips that came uh, come with it, and um, you can see that the the grain, the sort of wood grain, has been very nicely painted onto onto these plastic grips. So I'm still toying with the idea of getting some real wooden ones because you can get the ones with the the red nine on, uh, which I know are meant for the the C96, the short magazine version. But I think they'd be quite cool on this, so I might get those. I haven't decided yet. Uh, back here you can see you've got your safety and your hammer and then this is the back of the bolt uh, here so if I take the magazine out so it can be safe get to that in a minute when you um, yeah you can only gauge the safety um, as with most single actions <clears throat> when the uh, hammer is cocked so there you go got an S there displaying safety and an F you can see there for fire and then Pull the trigger, and then the bolt. You can see it's kind of hollowed out, um, but it doesn't come back quite as far as the real thing would. You can see there it should come back to at least back here, but probably even further, right? So, because this hammer, you can see it comes down all the way, because the real thing, the bolt would pass right over the hammer um, for when you're loading it or whatever. So that's the, uh, the back of the gun. Looking on top, um, this is the rear sight, adjustable for elevation, but it's pretty pointless because <laughs> it's only adjustable um, for increased elevation, so shooting at longer ranges. But in fact, it already shoots, let me get this right, uh, it already shoots higher. So you really don't need to, to move this at all. If anything, it needs to go a little bit lower but that's pretty impossible. So it does shoot at moderate ranges. It does shoot uh, high, so you need to aim a little bit low with this one. Um, and also what's from the sights. I said, I think in the Luger, the Pier 8 Luger review, that uh, these sights are not exactly great, I think is the uh, way to put it, because you've got this minuscule little notch in the back. It's like a smaller version, basically, of what's on the Luger. A little V-notch on the back and then a, a front post. So not the easiest sights in the world to use. Um, but to be honest, who's going to be really using the sights with this thing? <laughs> uh, especially in the full auto setting. I doubt anyone's going to be using them. So, yeah, the selector switch um, gone over. I think... I think I'm right in saying that N would be your semi-automatic for kind of normal fire, I suppose. And then switch it over to R, and you've kind of got a rapid fire. So on the full auto versions, um, that would be your full auto setting there. Moving on to the trigger then. Um, it's not exactly the greatest trigger in the world, but the, the brake itself isn't too bad. Uh, if I cock it here. Yeah. So there's a lot of take up, you can see, um, which does nothing. It's just taking up. 
and then there's a little bit of creep and then it breaks. And the reset isn't too bad either. Um, so yeah, hang on. Ooh, cool. Bang. Right, so the reset is there. So it's not too far, so obviously that's the only way we can kind of get it to go full auto, right? Just by pulling the trigger as fast as possible. But um, yeah, not, not the greatest trick in the world, but uh, it's not too bad either. It's not you know, overly heavy or anything like that. So uh, yeah, there we go. And um, yeah, I mentioned the handle right over there. You've got your little lanyard thing there if you really want to hang this thing around your neck, which I wouldn't advise because it is quite heavy, um, especially that magazine, which weighs a ton. Um, you can see here there's a little Allen screw, um, which is for holding on this sort of barrel shroud, because uh, obviously you've got the, the brass barrel inside, so or the, the fake barrel then, if you like. Um, so that's what holds it on. And I did find that mine was a little bit loose. I could move the barrel around relative to the receiver, because um, obviously there's a bit of wobble anyway between these two pieces. Um, but um, tightening this won't necessarily solve that problem because this really is purely for stopping this piece from sliding off. So what I did was took this out, slid this piece off, and uh, put a couple of small pieces of sellotape on the sort of in, uh, the outside surface of this piece, which obviously goes into into the receiver here, into the, the back of the barrel, I suppose, um, which just tightens up the fit a little bit. Well, quite a lot actually, <laughs> had some trouble getting it back on, but with a bit of force got it back on and it's now pretty rock solid. Um, I mean, there's, if I hold it here, there is no movement whatsoever in it now. <clears throat> Put that screw back in just to stop this piece working its way off or anything like that. So yeah, something to just check on yours, because you don't want to over tighten this because I did that and you actually push it through the, the, the um, inside of this barrel and uh, yeah, not good. Don't over tighten it. <laughs> um, and right up to the front you can see your pretty standard front post, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, which I suppose, hang on, let me think about this. You could probably, no, I was thinking no because you need to raise it, wouldn't you? Never mind. Um, and there you can see, I hope, um, some fake rifling in that sort of 9mm barrel and then deep down in there you can probably just about see the um, 0.177 brass barrel uh, which I forgot to mention didn't I <laughs> this is an air gun this is 0.77 um, 0.177 4.5mm steel BB not the SF version so yeah pretty nice and then just having a look at the other side there's not much happening uh, this is the KWC version it's not the one branded by Umrex so the only writing you get is on, on this side, and it's the usual uh, stuff they have to put on. Um, so on this side, there's absolutely nothing in terms of writing. Um, got the mag release there, um, which is quite nice. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I have no idea what this thing is. If anyone knows, please tell me, because it moves and it feels like it should probably do something. But um, <laughs> I haven't figured out. I thought it might be... Uh, a bolt lock but no it's not I don't know so if anyone knows please let me know <laughs> um, now for taking this if you really do want to take this apart which I do not recommend because there's lots of bits that will drop off as soon as you do take it apart um, and it's fairly all enclosed but if you do want to start taking it apart I know it's this much that you push up this little piece here this little tab and that kind of releases these two sections and you just push there you go, push this bit forwards, like that, you end up with the two pieces there. And most of the weight is up here actually, um, although this piece is all metal, so it does weigh a bit, obviously. Um, and I would recommend doing it this way up, not, not the other way up, not like this. Because um, this piece here tends to drop off, it's, it's loose, and there's nothing really holding it on. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you can probably get to various things in there, right? So I'm going to put that back together before I lose anything. Okay, 
make sure this tab is down. Okay, right, so that's pretty much the, the actual air gun done. So let's bring the magazine back in. So there you can see that's your magazine, all important with CO2, CO2 valve, and the BBs. Um, really rather substantial magazine in this one compared to my Lugo or the 1911. Um, this is really heavy. <laughs> it's, it's made of quite thick, um, whatever they use, metal, I don't know. And then obviously once you've got the CO2 in there and you can see it's it's a much bigger magazine because the CO2 can actually be buried in there. Um, not like the other two where it's sort of sticking out on the sides. And uh, here you go for loading your BBs. Pull the, the spring all the way down and then you load them in through this sort of slightly wider opening. There you go. Um, I think it holds, how many does it hold? 18 apparently, 18 rounds. And uh, yeah. And when you're letting go of this, you might find there you go, that um, the spring actually gets caught on the on the back there. But holding it back, just push it down a bit. And yeah, Ooh. there you go. Just gets caught on on that little lip there sometimes. Um, yep. So as I say, very. I mean, it it almost feels comparable in weight to, to the actual air gun itself. Um, not, not quite obviously but it is it's pretty pretty heavy and obviously once you put it in um, you have a lot of weight up front now pulling pulling the end of the gun down so and you've not got exactly the most ergonomic grip in the world um, to try and counteract that but it does feel you know not too bad um, and who's going to be worried about comfort when you're shooting full auto right <laughs> Uh, and actually, I found this to be a surprisingly accurate blowback BB gun, um, comparable to my Dan Wesson, which obviously isn't blowback. I don't know why, but it just seems to be, I don't know, maybe it's got a slightly longer barrel than my other two blowback guns. The trigger's not too bad. Um, it's got a, quite a nice break, so you can judge it quite well. So, I don't know why that would be, but there we go. Um, and, uh, yeah, in terms of actually shooting it, it does shoot pretty hard, actually. It's um, got a bit of a punch to the to the BB. I think this, yeah, this shoots at uh, 1.7 joules as a maximum energy, whereas the other two uh, blowback guns, the, the, the Luger and the 1911, I think shoot at 1.4 or 5. So... It's a little bit harder hitting on the target, um, partly because I think, I'd imagine anyway, the actual blowback piece, so this, this bolt in here, is comparatively lightweight and small and simple compared to the big heavy slide or the, the complex uh, toggle system on the Luger, um, which requires a bit more CO2 blowing everything back. So I think in this case, more of the CO2 is going towards pushing that BB down that uh, down the barrel um, so and obviously you've got a slightly longer barrel so it's got more time for the, that BB to accelerate as well so a couple of things that means it shoots a little bit uh, hotter okay right I'm gonna bring the box in quickly as I've still got it <laughs> there we go hopefully that uh, just about fits on the screen so here you can see you've got uh, a couple of the specs there. And notice that even though I'm in the UK, it says full auto on it. <laughs> it advertises as full auto, but that is not the case. Um, I think they just didn't bother doing a separate box packaging for, uh, for UK stores. So there we go. When you open it up, uh, you've got what well, you got. You've got the usual instruction manual, all very interesting, and safety points and that sort of thing. Um, bit of a oh yeah, that's the um, KWC sort of poster with all their um, air guns, and replica air guns. Get 250 BBs into the bargain. <laughs> you get a spare CO2 um, 
plug thing so that's what goes in the bottom of the magazine and you have to take all the way out to, to put the CO2 in so in case you lose it you've got a spare one and then of course for doing that up you've got the Allen key so let's put that all back in okay. it's quite a nice cardboard box as well um, and the same on both sides same picture and everything so, but yeah, just a just a warning. Even if it is advertised as fully auto in the UK, it's not. <laughs> um, yeah, that's because of the laws, as I have said. Okay, um, so I said that I'm hoping to try and get some real wooden grips, and that'll kind of complete it. Um, I think they're about twenty quid, so they're not exactly dirt cheap. But uh, I'd like to do that. It's all the same. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Done that, done that, done that. Yeah. The other thing as well, which would be quite cool to get, um, you can see here there's like a, a little kind of rail notch thing where it looks like something should slide in that they haven't supplied in the box. <laughs> um, that is for a, a stock. Um, if you've seen any of the trailers or gameplay of the new Battlefield 1 game, you've probably seen this pistol because it's one of their sort of main guns that uh, they're using. It probably appears like this. This is uh, the C96 appearance, which is a semi-automatic. It's the original version of this gun. Uh, semi-automatic and it would load via a clip from the top into a, a fixed magazine in here. Um, but uh, where was I going with this? Oh yes, the, the thing about so you can put a you can buy a stock, a wooden stock that sort of slips onto there, but it's not just a stock, it is in fact also a holster. Um because the, the inside of it is is hollow and you can slip this inside. So it kind of acts as a, a dual purpose um accessory, I suppose. <laughs> um but they run even more expensive than the grips at about fifty quid, I think I found them for on, on eBay. Um so maybe an investment for the future to kind of complete this would be quite cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so put this back in. Right, I think that pretty much covers about everything I wanted to talk about. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, um, maybe you forgot, <laughs> please follow me on Instagram. There's some pretty cool pictures, I think, of, uh, of this gun and uh, air gun and my rifle, air rifle, and the other air pistols. The username is UK underscore air gunner, or you can follow the link below in the description. So once again, thank you very much for watching. UK air gunner, out.